Hi everybody, welcome back to this channel. Thank you very much for joining us today. So today we're going to be doing question 7 from your November 2022 past paper. Okay, uh, more especially on 7.3 because it's really, really connected with uh, the session we conducted where we were focusing on question 9 from your 2022 past paper. Okay. Uh, I know there's a simple approach to solving this question where you can just uh, merely memorize that when the gradient is minimum, then that x value that makes it minimum is the same as the x value of the point of inflection. But the dangers of memorizing it, if, if you forget, you're in trouble. Okay, so we want to explore the conceptual part of this question. Um, using the application of calculus. Hence, it's very connected to what we learned in um, the previous session. If you haven't watched it, I really, really advise you to go and watch our question 9 so that you can easily also connect, enabling your relational understanding and thus deepening your conceptual understanding in calculus and its application. All right, without wasting any time, let's go. All right, 7.3. Uh, the tangent to G, uh, which is your cubic function, has a minimum gradient at the point um, minus 1 and uh, minus 7. For which values of x will G be concave up? Okay, so you can see now that uh, this is a cubic function where we start to talk about concavity, right? Now they want the values of x for which this function will be concave up. And they've given you uh, quite a very important information here um, that this graph actually, its tangent has a minimum gradient at the point minus 1 and minus 7. So if you recall the previous session uh, from the November 2022 on question 9, we had something about minimum distance, right? Where we said, okay, for us to get the minimum distance, let's first get an expression for the distance, okay? Then for us to get the minimum distance, we now go and derivate that expression for the distance. And then um, we get the x values that will minimize that distance. We return back and substitute and get the minimum distance. But now it's, it's quite changed, right? You have already been given the x values that minimizes the gradient, right? You have already been given that the tangent to this function g has a minimum gradient and at a point minus 1 and minus 7. It means that there's no need for us to go and calculate the x value where the gradient will be minimum because you have already been provided that the gradient is minimum when uh, at a point minus 1 and minus 7. And at that point, you can actually see that the x value there was actually equals to minus one. We'll have to use that information as we proceed to solve this question. Okay, but now let's focus on con concavity. They're saying for which values of x will g be concave up? Okay, so when we look at a cubic function, maybe let me draw this cubic function where a is positive. Okay, so this is our cubic function where our value of a is positive okay and we can see this because it's it ends with a smile okay so that's how we can actually <laughs> quite remember that okay so now you can see that uh, when we talk about concavity it's a point in your cubic function maybe let me use a, another color there's a point on your cubic function where your your graph changes its shape or rather its concavity and that point is called what? The point of what? Of inflection. Okay. So the point of inflection is a point where any cubic function changes its concavity. It can be from concave uh, uh, down, in this case, to being concave up. So that point where it's changing from being concave down into being concave up, we call that point point of inflection. And it's a very critical uh, uh, important point there, right? So that will actually help us. So at that point, you, you know that a point in math is made up of x and y, right? So now, basically, the question needs that value of x for which this function now 
will be concave up, right? So in this case, if you were to get that value of x, let's just say maybe x there at that point where it's changing concavity is 3, right? Uh, for y, let me just put g of x. Okay, let's just say the x was 3, uh, and this is determined the value of x for which the graph is concave up. So you'd basically go, oh, it's actually at x equals to 3 there, moving uh, forward, right? When actually x is greater than 3. That's where it's being concave up. In this case, we can see as we move forward, x is being greater than 3. The graph is being concave up. Okay, but in this case now, we, 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 we don't know, right? So how do we determine the value of x uh, at, at the point of inflection? We do know that at the point of inflection, the second derivative of the graph must be equals to what? Must be equals to zero. Okay, at that point of inflection, the second derivative must be equals to zero. Then you go and solve for what? Solve for x. So the x that you solve for, it will be that x at the point of inflection. All right. Okay, let's now go and uh, and and get this this x at that point of inflection. Okay, so now we do know that we have to first derivate. We are given the function g of x is equals to a x exponent three plus three x squared plus b x plus c. Right? We first do need to get the first derivative. So the first derivative of this will be a times 3, which is 3a. We go to the exponent, we subtract 1. 3 minus 1, 2. Then 3 times 2, 6. x2 minus 1 will be left with 1. So I can just leave that. So b times 1 is b. x1 minus 1 is x exponent 0, which is 1, right? So b times 1 is just b. The derivative of c is a constant is 0. So we just leave it like that. So this is our first derivative. Then we do know that for us to get the point of inflection, right, where it, the graph changes its concavity from being concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down, we have to get the second derivative. So we're going to derivate our function for the second time. So it's 3a times 2. This will be 6a. Then we go to the exponent. We subtract 1. 2 minus 1, we are left with 1. So I can just leave that. Here we do know we have 1. 6 times 1 is 6. x exponent 1 minus 1, 0. This will be 1, right? I can just leave it at 6 because 6 times 1 is 6. Then uh, the derivative of b, which is a constant, it will just be 0. So even if I don't add it, it doesn't change anything. So now we got our second derivative, right? Then uh, in order for us to get the x at the point of inflection where the graph changes its shape or concavity, we must equate our second derivative to what? To zero. Okay. So we're going to equate our second derivative to zero. Then we'll have zero is equals to 6ax plus 6. Okay. Then we have to solve for x now because they need the value of x. So 6, uh, if I transpose, that will be minus 6 equals to 6ax then we divide both sides by 6a, divide by 6a. This cancel this. Our x now at the point of inflection will be minus uh, 6 and 6 will cancel. We'll be left with minus 1 over what? Over a. We have a problem now. We have to now go and solve for a because we don't know what this a is. And they are, here they need the values of x that will ensure that this graph is concave up. We have just now solved for the x at the point of inflection. But the problem is we don't even know the shape of the graph, whether a is positive or a is negative, so that we can now go and decide whether x is greater or x is less. Because we must really know the value of a in order for us to really um, uh, uh, get that point. Now we just got uh, sort of like an expression in a way. Uh, but it, it has a variable that is unknown. We have to now go and solve for A. Hence, now it's very, very important for us to go back to our question and look at another information that we are given, right? So the very, very important information that will help us to solve for A is this information that the tangent to G has a minimum gradient at this point, okay? Very, very important. This is now the application of calculus. Now we are given that the tangent uh, 
2G has a minimum gradient. What is being minimized in this case? You can actually see that what is being minimized is the what is the gradient, right? And we talked about this uh, in, in our previous uh, session where we were talking about the minimization of distance. And say so if something is being minimized, we must first get a mathematical equation or expression of that thing, right? And then we derivate it. And then in this case, they've simplified it because we know uh, the x value of, 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 of the minimization of, of this. That will minimize the gradient. Okay. Okay. So now we can go and solve for A, right? Using that information. Okay. So now you do need to understand that the first derivative of a cubic function is the same as the gradient because why remember that when we derivate our cubic function we get the critical points there right and if i come and put a tangent there so basically our g prime x will be the same as the gradient of that tangent in that case okay so now we want to solve for a using this information we do know that the gradient is being minimized and the process of optimization is that if we want to optimize something get the equation of that thing so we have to get the equation for the gradient and we already have already calculated this because we have found the first derivative already right so that's our first derivative which is the same as the what as the gradient okay it means we are sorted with an equation now we have our equation there. If we have an equation of, of something that we want to minimize, what can we do now? We go and derivate that equation. Okay, so now this is the gradient. The gradient has this equation. Okay, then but it has been minimized. We have already know the x value that minimizes this gradient at x equals to minus one from the point there we can see that at x equals to minima, minus one sorry about that that is where the gradient is uh, being minimized it's it's being the smallest okay so now that we have the equation for the gradient which is our first derivative what do we do we go and derivate remember to get the x that minimizes or maximizes we have to derivate the equation of that quantity that we want to minimize okay just like if you had volume all right if you have volume and they say minimize the volume find the x values that will minimize the volume right what do you do is you go and get a mathematical equation for your volume then you derivate it you equate your derivative to zero then you solve for those x those x will be the x that will either minimize or maximize but in this case it quite it's quite different they've already told us that the gradient is minimum at a certain point which is x equals to what minus one at x equals to minus one the gradient is minimum what do we do now we have the equation for the gradient in order to incorporate this x now to substitute this x equals to minus one we have to go and derivate because that's how we solve for this x uh, that either minimizes or maximizes. We derivate the equation of something that, that we want to minimize or maximize. In this case, we derivate the gradient. When we derivate the gradient, we are actually getting the what? The second derivative, which we have already calculated already, right? Then now we equate our second derivative to what? To zero, right? And now we go. We already know the x that minimizes this gradient is at x equals to what minus one then with this we can go and solve for a okay i hope you really understand that part because it's very very crucial so we are saying if we want to minimize a quantity or maximize a quantity the first step is to get the equation for that thing that you want to minimize okay in this case is the gradient that has been minimized they have already given us at a point x equals to minus 1 and y equals to minus 7. We are very interested in x, right? Then after we have an equation, we go and derivate that equation and equate our derivative to 0. 
and solve for that x. In this case, there's no need to solve for x because they've already told us that the gradient is minimum at x equals to minus 1. Hence, I just come when I equated the gradient to 0, substitute x equals to minus 1. Then go and solve for your unknown so that you can now go and check which x values would actually uh, be the range in that way that would actually give us a shape which is concave what? Concave up. Okay, so now we can go and solve for a because we have substituted x equals to minus 1. So this becomes minus 6 is equals to minus 6a. So in order to solve for a, we divide both sides by minus 6. Then our a is going to be what? A is going to be positive 1. Now we can know the shape of the graph. A is positive then we do know that the shape must end with a smile okay that's how you can actually recall this your cubic function must end with a smile so that's when it's positive now we do know that we can now go and finally solve for our x at point of inflection what was left there is for us to get a and now we have solved for a a is equals to one we can go and substitute back our point of inflection, we have found um, x equals to minus 1 over a. Our a is 1, then x equals to what? Minus 1. All right. So our point of inflection is when x is equals to what? Minus 1. So, but now we need for which, we have to answer the question, for which values of x will g be concave up? Obviously, it's when we are starting at this minus 1 and moving where? And moving forward. Okay. Because here it's where the graph is actually concave what concave up so it's when x is greater is as we are increasing and moving forward being greater than what minus one that's the values of x that will make this function to be concave up i hope you find this helpful